With 300 men, God brought freedom from evil and oppression. This was the army of Gideon. Today we face a difficult battle. The spirit of fear has gripped the hearts of men. It is time for the army of the Lord to rise up and retake the land. Welcome to Victory in the Valley. Every day we are releasing the weapon of prayer. By faith, families are being set free. Bodies are being healed. And joy is restored. Walking in the promises of God, we expect miracles to happen. Jesus is our King. God is our Father. And the Holy Holy Spirit is with us. This is Victory in the Valley with Kevin Ortiz. Faith, amen. So we're going to encourage you and we're going to teach you about faith today. And we're going to talk about the shield of faith in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. The Bible says in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay, look at me real quick. Some people read that scripture and say we wrestle not. That means I'm not, I'm not supposed to fight. The Bible doesn't say that you're not going to be in some fights. You're going to be in some fights, amen? But the Bible says you're not wrestling against something physical. You're wrestling against something spiritual. You might see a sickness and disease attacking you or a loved person or a situation attacking you or a loved one, and you might see those things happening, but I want the, the source behind that, that attack is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Cancer is a spiritual thing. AIDS is a spiritual thing. Depression is a spiritual thing. Recession is a spiritual thing. We might see the effects of that spirit, of that devil trying to destroy something in, the, in someone's life. But you cannot attack it in the physical. You must attack it in the spiritual. So the word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against power and powers and spiritual things. Look at your neighbor and say, my fight is in the spirit. So if, if we know that what we're fighting against is something we can't see, we better learn how to fight in faith. Because the Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the way you fight in the spirit. Amen? Faith is the way you fight in the spirit. Let's continue reading. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you, were, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Here the word of God is talking to us about being dressed for warfare. Amen. And the word of God is, is speaking to us about taking up the armor of God. See, the amazing thing is the devil tries to not fight fair. He tries to steal and he tries to hurt you in a place that you cannot see. But I want to let you know your God doesn't fight fair either. Amen? I mean, think about it. God says you have the victory before you begin the fight. And God wants to clothe you with his armor so that when you are in his armor, the devil can't tell if he's messing with God or he's messing with you. All he sees is the armor of God coming at him. And how many know that the devil is afraid of, of, of Jesus, amen? He's fought that battle one time and he still got the wounds and he's licking them right now, amen? He's been defeated. The devil's a defeated foe. And God wants to encourage you to fight with his armor, fight with his power. That's what God is trying to tell us right now. He's trying to, to encourage us to fight the way he fights. And the Bible says that when you take on the armor of God, he says, above all, take out the shield of faith. 
that you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. How many of you guys experienced some fiery darts in your life? Some attacks that happened in your life. You thought you were doing good. I've been a good Christian. I've been going to church. Why do I have to go through that situation in my life? Why am I have to deal with that problem at work? Why do I have to deal with those issues with my children? And the devil's been throwing these fiery darts at you, trying to destroy you. But I want to encourage you today. God wants to give you the secret of victory every single time. It's called the shield of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, the shield of faith. See, the word of God first says, he says, don't be strong in your power. Be strong in my power. It says, be strong in the Lord. And then the power of your might, his might. No, what God is trying to show you that you don't have to play fair when it comes to the devil. Amen. You don't have to walk around weakling because you could just be strong in God. You might not have the power to lift it, but God does. You might not have the power to endure, but God does. You might not have the power to withstand, but God does. So the word of God is saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not your power. Stop looking at your bank account and, and planning your future according to your bank account. Why don't you start looking to his bank account in faith and start expecting your future to happen by his power, not your power. Stop looking at your strength. Look to his strength. If you were to look at your strength, you'll always find yourself defeated. But if you, keep on, if you put your eyes on Jesus Christ, you will find out that God is strong enough. Amen? So the Bible's commanding us, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. And then the Bible says, take up the shield of faith. Take it up. you got to take that shield of faith up. There is a shield of faith that is available for you. It's available for you. My, my mother... You know, she, uh, she was a woman that took up her faith. She carried that shield, and she was a master with that shield. I remember when, when we were growing up, my brother, Carlos Jr., you know, he's the one that developed the muscles of my, my parents' faith. I'm telling you, that boy was in everything. And, you know, uh, my brother Jr., my brother Clark, my sister, those, they developed my, my parents' faith because they were all over the place, Amen. You, they wouldn't be alive unless mama was praying, amen? Me and Mark, we were, we were the peace. We were good kids, right, Mark? Now, if you ask Julie, Clark, and Junior, they might say differently, but I got the microphone so I can make my story the way I want to make it. <laughs> but my, my, my brother, Junior, one day he came home with a motorcycle, and my mom hated motorcycles. And she saw that motorcycle, and she didn't want him riding that motorcycle. But my brother Junior was so excited about that motorcycle. So when my brother Junior wasn't looking, my mom just went up to that motorcycle, put her hands on that motorcycle, and commanded it not to work. I command that motorcycle not to work in Jesus' name. She spoke. She was operating her faith. She believed that if she would just speak to that motorcycle, it will not work. Her faith was there. Well, my brother Junior was, was going to go out, and he went outside, and he got ready, and he started to, to kickstart that bike, and that bike didn't start up. He started playing with all the, the stuff on there, and he, he tried and tried and tried, and that bike would not start up. So my brother, you know, gets off all angry, goes into the house, looks at my mother, and he says, you prayed over my bike, didn't you? Don't you know I have an appointment? I need to go. Will you release that bike so I could go? <laughs> so my mother said, okay. I released it in Jesus' name. And my brother went out there and he kick-started that bike and it started right up. Amen. He went out and he was driving and in the local super and local convenience store there, and it was called Maverick Market. How many of y'all remember Maverick Markets? And he was there, and he was playing, trying to pop a wheelie that day. And, and I don't know what he was thinking, but he ended up flying off that motorcycle into the front door of Maverick Supermarket and he ended up slicing his nose all weird. So if you ever see Junior, look at his nose. He got this thing. I'm telling you, if he sneezes, watch out if you're on the side because it probably shoots out that way. <laughs> but, see, my mother, she knew how to operate her shield of faith, amen. 
And there are many times that she had opportunities to operate, and today she's still operating, but trust me, her shield is bigger than her body. It is strong, amen? It is powerful, and I want to encourage you, your shield is strong, and your shield, oh, it's very powerful, amen? And the Bible is commanding us, it's take, it's, it tells us to take it up. Well, what is the shield of faith? And I want to, we're going to learn what the shield of faith is, all, is made up of. Because, you know, every armor is made up of precious metals. They're made up with the, with the strongest metals. And the blacksmith comes and he, he, he forges those metals and he hits those metals and he, he proves those metals to make sure that when it's time for warfare, that the armor doesn't fail. And I want to I teach you today what your shield of faith is made up of. Amen. How many of you like to know what your shield is made of today? This, your shield of faith is unbreakable. It is the strongest thing and it will not break because what it, what it is made up of. If you can, go with me to Psalms 23. Psalms 23 This is just one of the most beautiful scriptures, chapters in the, in the Word of God, where David was talking about, about how the Lord is his shepherd, that he shall not want. He talks about how God leads them and lays them down in green pastures and brings restoration to his soul. But if we look at Psalms 23, when you have it, say Amen. Verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you, which is God, are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. The shield of faith is made up of those two ingredients. The rod of God and the staff of God. When there is a, a, a shepherd and he's, he's caring to the sheep and he's, he's guarding over his sheep, the, he, he holds on to a rod. That's one of the things, one of the things about the shepherd, they're always traveling all over the place and they're, they're only, their only goal is to make sure that the sheep are well protected, well fed, that they're growing. And they're always going, looking for the best lands to graze on and the best waters to drink from. And they, they travel light. So they carry a rod and they carry a staff. The rod, it, it, it's amazing. The, these shepherds, they, they, they find the best piece of wood that they could find. And, and they design these rods as a, as a weapon. The rod, not only is it designed like a club where if the, a wild animal were to come and attack the sheep, where they will pull out the rod and begin to fend the sheep, but it's also designed so that if they are walking behind the sheep and as the sheep are going forward and if a, if a wolf or an animal came to attack the sheep in the front, the, the rod is designed that the shepherd can throw it with perfect accuracy and attack that wild beast and destroy that beast before it kills one of his sheep they actually have competitions on on how accurate the shepherd's rod can be when they throw it the first thing about the rod the rod represents it represents the anointing of God, which is God's power. The rod is a weapon of attack that God has given us. And it's inside that shield of faith. If you can go with me to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We're going to learn a little bit about the anointing of God. Because the anointing of God has been given to you. When Jesus came down from the, from, the, from the wilderness being tempted by the devil, but yet not sinning, the Bible says that he came into the temple and he took out the scrolls and he began to read 
scriptures from Isaiah. And this is what he, he said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Look at your neighbor and say, God has anointed me. To preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. In other words, Jesus comes down. He doesn't say, give me a shovel, we got some work to do. He doesn't say, give me some tools, I got to build something. He came down standing in his place of power. Standing in his place of power. And he began to speak what his purpose on this world was for. He says, now that I got the anointing of God on me, let me tell you, this is upon me. Sick, be healed. Blind, start to see. Those that are in bondage, chained, I break them right now and you're free. In other words, he began to declare what is done. He didn't say, I'm going to, I got to work now. I got some stuff I need to do. Oh man, we got some stuff. We, no, he began just to declare what is done. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am anointed. So he began to speak like a king. And he began to command things like a king. A king in authority, he looks at a servant, he says, get up, that servant gets up. He says, get me some water, that servant gets some water. He says, get out of my presence, that servant has to leave his presence. Jesus began to command things like a king. Sickness, get out. Oppression, you're done. He began to just put things into place. The Spirit of the Lord is upon If you're downtrodden, guess what? I got the good news for you today. And he began to set things in, per, in, in, in perfect place. That's what the anointing of God does. Many of you are waiting for God to move on your life and God's saying, listen, I've sent my spirit upon you. You are anointed. Take up your shield and begin to use it. Begin to speak to some things that need to be spoken to. Stop complaining and crying and whimpering. That's not, that's not, kingdom minded that's not godly mind i don't think that way start thinking like me like a king commanded to get out of your house when was the last time something negative might have happened in your house and you stood up and said that ain't gonna happen here devil you get out right now don't you know the spirit of the lord is upon me so the first thing that the that the shield of faith consists of is the anointing of god god's power there's no limit to God's power. Look at your neighbor and say, there's, there's no limit to God's power. So there's no limit to your faith. The only limits to your faith are the ones that you put upon yourself. You know, there was three guys, they, they, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, they were living for their God. They were living for God, and there was a, a king that wanted to be exalted up to the area of, of God, and he created this, this image, and he said, and he, the whole land had to bow and worship that image. And they put, they put a sentence, if you didn't bow and worship that image, you will be killed. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not going to bow our knee to any other God except for our God, our, the almighty God. And they put a stand, they, they stood upon where their faith was at. When they didn't bow, the king commanded throw them into the fiery furnace to be burnt. The Bible says that the fire was so hot that the men that threw them in the fire fell down and, and died themselves. See, these men, they didn't care about, they weren't afraid about death. They were standing on their principles. They were standing upon their faith. And if they had to die for it, they're willing to die for it. 
They look at the king and they say, you could throw us in the pit, but our God will save us. And when they got thrown in the pit, the Bible says that they were, they were bound. But when they were thrown in the pit, the, the, the chains fell off. The king looked in the fire. And here are these three guys just walking around the fire. King looks at his, his, his servants and said, didn't we throw three, three people in the fire? He said, yes, sir. Why do I see four people there? And the fourth looks like the son of God. Matter of fact, it was so good in the fire that the king had to scream in the fire and say, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come on out. I mean, if they were burning and hurting, wouldn't they want to get out quick? But they were having a good time. They were talking. Hey, how you doing? Jesus, how are you? I knew you'd show up. They were standing on their faith, and they had a miracle that happened in their life. You know, some of you have been wanting an encounter with God. If you would only stand on your faith, you'll have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen? It is the anointing of God upon your life that will take you to the next level. He's clothed you with these garments. You carry it where you go. And as long as you think that you're defeated, as long as your mindset is always looking at your problems and complaining, you'll never experience the victory that God has for you. God expects you to walk by faith and not by sight. He, he expects you to walk in victory and not defeat. Amen? So he gives you his power. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you have God's power. It is a coat that God puts on you. In verse, uh, in verse 19, Jesus ends the reading and he says, to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord. I like it the way the, the, the Amplified says it. It says, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely, everybody say profusely, profusely abound. Jesus says, okay, not only am I anointing you, but I want to let you know God is for you. This is your year. This is your time. God is, is saving you, and God is giving you a, a bunch of favor. Amen? More favor than you can handle. You know, if I told you, listen, I'm going to do you a favor, you're only limited to my strength and what I'm willing to do for you. But when God says he's going to give you favor, I'm telling you, get ready for great blessings. Amen. Jesus is telling you, I'm accept this is the acceptable year of the Lord and the favor of God is upon you now. In other words, you're not cursed, you're blessed. You're not defeated, you're victorious. He's declaring it over you. The second ingredient that consists of your shield is the staff. The staff, the, the shepherd used to walk with the staff and uh, the staff, it's amazing, the staff was actually like a history book. The shepherd used to write the things, his, he used to write his, his heritage on there, he used to write the things that, that he's expecting, he used to, they even used to put just things that would remind them and remind other people of who they are. Matter of fact, there was this one man who got in trouble because he sold his staff because he wanted to do some things with a woman that he shouldn't be doing. He didn't know that that woman was related to him and that woman became pregnant. He wanted to, to stone her to death, but the woman had his staff. He said, the one who this staff belongs to is the father of this child. When he looked at that staff, he said, that's my staff. See, the staff is a form of identity. The staff is a covenant. The staff is, is the name. The staff is the name. And God is saying in that scripture, it says, my rod, which is my power, my anointing, and my staff, which is my name, my covenant, and my word, 
is upon you. It's yours. That shield of faith consists of not just the anointing of God, but also God's promises and God's word for you. That when you take up the shield of faith, you're taking, God's, you're taking up God's promises of what he's going to do for your life, and you're taking also God's power to get the job done. It consists of those two things. When you carry that shield of faith, you're able to look at the devil and say, hey, you have no victory here because you're not coming against me. You're coming against the power of God and the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what God is giving you when you take up your shield. You're not taking up your shield saying, hey, look, I got, I, I'm Kevin Ortiz. This is my shield. No, you're taking up the shield. This is God Almighty's shield. I'm wearing it today. I'm holding it today. This is God Almighty's power. I'm holding it on today, holding on to it today. So when I go into battle, I'm not going into battle with my strength. I'm going into battle with the strength of the Lord. The devil comes and attacks you. Uh, you want to attack me? You can attack Kevin all you want, but I'm not going to fight fair. I'm going to attack you with the name of the Lord. Amen. And he has not, never lost a fight. The Bible says in John 10, if you go there with me in John 10, in John 10, in John 10, 10, it says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. In other words, Jesus is telling you, I'm good and I got my rod and I got my staff. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The third thing I want you to know about the shield of faith is never walk in fear. Fear has not been given to you. It is a lie of the devil. Fear is an attack on your faith. The devil will come at you and he'll try to put fear upon your life because he's trying for you. He's, he's wanting you to lay down your shield. When you, can, when you are only looking about at fear and you're, you're worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow and you're so fearful about the future, you can never look at God's promises and carry God's anointing when you're so gripped with the devil's fear. Matter of fact, fear, you know, in, in, your, in your hands... You, you are invited to our next church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come to Faith Pleases God. Hear an inspiring word. Experience the presence of God. And claim your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to Faith Pleases God. I know Jesus will change your life. You can also watch us live online at faithpleasesgod.com. Faith Pleases God Church. All are welcome.